Grace and peace to you guys. April Chapman here with the Standard of Truth podcast. And I needed to go live because I am wholly, wholly annoyed um, by the the shenanigans that never, I, I always think they're going to do something that's going to shock me. And then something else happens. And then I'm like, oh, I'm not really that surprised. And then you think, you know, when people who have common sense come out and say, um, this is really not biblical. We don't really have scriptural precedent for this. Maybe you should reconsider. And then they double down, right? Who am I speaking about? I'm speaking about Dr. Juanita Bynum. I'm sure you have heard about it. I've actually already released a video about it, which by the way, you need to go and check out. It is not a very long video. I decided to cover that topic in two installments. So um, part one was just released this morning. And, you know, y'all know how I get. I I, I try to dial back um, the righteous aggression that tends to well up inside of me when I address these topics. But I I I I, I couldn't. So um, be sure to go and check that video out. Um, Lord willing, I'll release part two of that video tomorrow. But specifically, I wanted to come on camera today live to address the Christian Post article that actually came out yesterday that gave us a little bit more insight as to why Dr. Bynum thinks that one, God's people needed this, and two, the audacity of her to justify the price. And further three, you know it's bad when one false teacher calls out another false teacher. That's when you know you have hit an all-time low. Really quickly, I do want to address those in the comment section. Grace and peace to you guys. I'm not ignoring you. I am just trying to get to the point and not belabor it because I don't have a lot of time to be on here in the middle of the day. Um, but I want to address and say hi to everyone. I'm glad to see you. And yeah, so give me one quick second. We are going to, I know it's kind of small, but I'll do a good job of reading it. So you'll be fine. So like I said, I've already covered a video on this topic discussing and I likened what Juanita was doing, or at least what she's doing is encouraging others to act just like Simon the Sorcerer. People who elevate themselves to these, it's these this level of spiritual elitism, when, when they elevate themselves like that, what it causes false converts to do or new believers who just don't know the scriptures and they're not well-versed or they don't even have discernment because maybe they just came to faith. But I find the, the false converts who flock to stuff like this, it's because of the spiritual elite, the spiritual elitism and the levels that people like Juanita Bynum and other false teachers will attempt to guilt you to make you think, well, you know, I can't, you know, alliterate my words like she does. And when I speak into the mic, I don't have like that level of power and I don't have the homiletic style that she does. And so therefore her prayers must be doing something holy or way more special than my simple prayers do. And so therefore I want that level of spiritualism, you know, when, when, when she positions herself as if she is like, you're here and she's next level, she's next dimension, right? First of all, we can't find any of this kind of language in scripture where it talks about, you know, we're we going to new heights in Jesus. And, you know, this this ain't for baby Christians. This just that next level stuff. Now, the scriptures do talk about when you're an infant in the faith and the pure milk of the word and maybe you're not ready for meat. That's different than this this new age mysticism, this hidden knowledge in the 
heavenly of heavenlies that only Juanita can tap into to make people think that they have to spend $1,500 to attain that. And then the concept of not only am I going to teach you what I've been doing for 35 years, now, now, now we're not just going to do that, but I'm going to bestow to you the mantle. I don't know who bestowed to her her mantle, right? Because last time I checked, you know, there are no big eyes or little U's in God's kingdom. We are all in the family of God, the pastor, the bishop, the elder, the evangelist, the missionary, the lay person, down to the person who's scrubbing the toilets. We all are on an even playing field. And I don't think, I don't, I don't think Juanita got that memo. So guys, give me one second. Let me mute my phone because it's going crazy. Um, so let's let's just dig into this Christian Post article, if you will. Uh, the, the headline reads: Televangelist Juanita Bynum defends $1,500 prayer course because this is not some cheap based class, right? This is next level stuff. Calling herself a pioneer in high-level prayer. See, I can't even get past the opening sentence because the first, my spidey sense, right? For the Bible-thinking woman, I know my audience is mixed, but for the most part, the people who tend to listen to me the most are women. Our, our, our Bible-thinking woman's spidey sense should be tingling when we're like, well, what's high-level prayer? I don't. I've never heard of high level prayer. Is is there high level prayer and low level prayer? Now we have such thing as unbiblical prayers, right? Where when you're praying and asking for things that violate God's commands in Scripture, like Lord, uh, let me give you an example of a an unbiblical prayer. Lord, bless me with that woman's husband over there, because I want him. That's an unbiblical prayer, right? We have biblical prayers, we have unbiblical prayers, but we don't have high level prayers in comparison to low level prayers, right? So she considers herself, she's calling herself a pioneer in high level prayer and pointing to her decades of experience as a minister of the gospel, televangelist and self-proclaimed prophetess Juanita Bynum defends her $14.99.99 price tag for a four week intensive prayer course and dismissed the criticism she's been facing in line online over it as an insult. So typical, most false teachers completely abandon loving biblical correction. One, because you can't tell them nothing, right? They can't, they can't be corrected. And their and their their activities never, you can never find what they do in the scriptures because to them, the God that they're serving is doing a new thing. Right. So that's why you can't never find it in the text because it's this, 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 that next level stuff. But she doubles down in defense. So she knows that she has been, and rightfully so, receiving criticism from the certified foolishness as this, uh, 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 such as this course. Now, hear me clearly. I am not against monetizing content. One, I'm a content creator. Two, I am a Christian. And three, I'm an entrepreneur. And four, I'm a capitalist, right? I wholly believe in leveraging your knowledge, your skills, tangible skills and tangible knowledge of a subject. I wholeheartedly heartily support the monetization of that. Why? Because there's so many things in the world that people want to do and they don't know how to do it. And if you're the subject matter expert on it, a very smart and wise thing to do in order to help and serve other people would be to package that up in, in a way that people can understand it and digest it and monetize it, meaning charge a fee for this knowledge, right? The problem with Juanita is, is that, I, hey, it's the hustle. I get it. But um, it's not novel. Prayer is not something that needs to be monetized. And you're not doing anything special that's going to yield me results that I can't get myself. It's not like she is teaching you how to build a business in 100 days. This is the exact steps that I use to build this business to a multi-million dollar uh, empire. And I want to show you how to do it too. This is not that. This is not 
I've been a, I'm a veteran homeschooling mom and I've been teaching uh, my children homeschool for 23 years. Here's the exact blueprint that I use that's going to, you know, cut out all the fluff and cut out all the overwhelm and help you to become the rock star homeschooling mom yourself. This is not that. She is literally pimping some alleged gift that she has in an effort to entice the, the unsuspecting, the biblically illiterate, the false convert into paying her to do so. And this is why we're discussing it today. So she goes, I quote, I'm not going to insult myself to even discuss the price. How dare you question my $1,500 price tag? Don't you know how valuable this information is? Do you not know? that I've been able to tap into the heavenly realms that you, my friend, you regular nominal Christian, you don't know nothing about this. So you need me, you need me and, 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 and my magical skill, right? My special incantation, my, uh, my formula that's going to help you get the results that she's perpetrating like she got. We'll talk about that a little bit later. It's an insult to who I am after being in ministry for over 50 years. And for I know at least 35 years, I've done nothing but been a pioneer in the things of prayer and helping people to understand prayer and letting them watch me do it so that they can know that there is different dimensions and different levels of prayer. Red flag, flag on the play. Sorry, sorry, sorry. I need a book, a chapter, a verse in context to substantiate the idea that there are different dimensions and different levels to prayer. And I don't need you pulling a verse out your back pocket, exegeting it and saying, see, here you go. Let's, let's, let's do an exegetical study on what the Bible teaches about prayer and see if we can derive dimensions and different levels to prayer that are only given to a select few. So, 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 so if, if, if this is true, let's just go with the argument that this is something that the Bible teaches. My question is, how do we find these people? If I'm a new convert, I'd never heard of Dr. Bynum. And, and, and I too want to deepen my prayer life. How would I find such person? Does the Bible give me a roadmap or a blueprint to how I find people who have, have tapped into the different dimensions and the different levels of prayer so that I may too, you know, after 35 years, get the results that you're getting? And what are these results? Is it, is it $4,000 boots, Juanita? Is it, is it a new car? Like, what are the results that you're promising people in an effort to heighten their ability or propensity to get a hair, a, a, a prayer through that they're unable to do now. I would like to know that. Let's take a minute. Um, let's see. Hey guys, you received without prayer, give without pay. Uh, yeah, her conscience has been seared. So let's go on with this article. Um, I'm just gonna read it. No need to share it. You guys can read. You can I'll, I'll link to the article in the description box. But um, she's she's doubling down and she's not going to defend it because there's different levels of prayer. The 63, first, Titus 2 tells us what the older women are supposed to be doing. And, and you know, she's 63, I'm 43. So we're 20 years apart. I actually have a sister who is this age and I don't want to be uh, demeaning of her age at all. What I want to do is be biblical and say, Titus 2 tells the older women. And I consider myself, an older woman, like at this point, I'm old auntie. I'm the old auntie that comes alongside you to do what Titus 2 admonishes older women to do, which is to teach the women how to love their husbands, right? To be submissive, godly women, right? Not being busybodies, not all over the streets, uh, 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 should have kind of hunt like we no. Titus breaks down what the older women should be teaching the younger women to be keepers at home, to be chaste, uh, to be lovers of good, right? That's not what this is. You're too old for this, Juanita. No, you're too old for this. And I say that with as much love and sincerity as I can because I'm too old for this. 
So we could swap ages. We could swap ages. This is not personal. This is biblical. I have biblical issues with what with, with, with what's going on here. And I know how I, and no, she goes, and how do I know that there are different levels and different dimensions? So she's going to tell us, guys. Well, it's simple. It's called result. So wait a minute. Beyonce could make the same argument, right? Jay-Z could make the same argument because we know, right, that they get results and they worship Satan, like they're Luciferian, like they literally worship the devil. And the and the God of this world has given them what their, their carnal hearts desire, and that's fame, fortune, and money. They have favor with man, favor with the culture. So when she says, I know there are different levels and different dimensions to this because it's called results, is she implying that she's getting results that other Christians are not getting, so therefore... We need to sign up for this course so we can get the same results too. Once again, check out video number one that I did on this subject. It dropped earlier today. You really need to watch that. You really do because I spell out, I make a strong biblical case for what she is doing here. And then she goes, when you get the results, you know the person absolutely knows what they are doing. And that's what I want to do. So we can apply this same faulty logic to, well, you know, there are lots of people in the culture who claim to be believers and they attribute their wealth, their fame, their success, their favor with, with, with the culture. They attributed that to God, but we know that that's not how they're getting it because these people worship the devil. So the, the reign, God reigns on the just and the unjust. So I don't know what results she's talking about, but because she comes from the prosperity camp, do we leave room for the possibility that prosperity, favor, increase, breakthrough, those are kind of the results that she might be speaking of? I don't know. I don't know. But I could tell you, God's will ain't for everybody to have a lot of money. Okay? The poor you will have with you always. I think that is that Matthew 7 or Mark 7. One of the two. Poor ain't going nowhere. Right? God determines what we are going to have in this life. But not only that, he even gives us the ability to generate and earn wealth. How? By the sweat of our brow, by working with our hands, by providing things in the marketplace that are useful and valuable that people need in exchange for money, right? I'm, not, I'm a capitalist. I told you I am not against money and having it. I am against the unbiblical nature in which the prosperity movement has crept in and taken over American evangelicalism in such a way that people are going to great lengths and desperate measures by spending $14.99 thinking that they need to do this in order to get something from God. And so what happens when they don't get the results, Juanita? Do you offer a 30-day money-back guarantee? What kind of warranty we get with, with, with this institute? What, what happens when the prayer shawl just, it gets damaged in the dryer. I don't know. Does the power leave from the shawl? What happens when we use all the holy oil, the consecrated oil that you sent us? Y'all do know this is witchcraft, right? I know there are varying degrees of people who are going to disagree with me, and that's that's fine. We do see in scripture where the elders, when, when, you, when there's someone sick and you call the elders of the church and they anoint with oil, the power ain't in the oil. OK, the power is in the prayer. There are medicinal uses for oil. Right. But this all you're doing is getting greasy. That's it. You're just getting greasy. Why? Because if the object of your faith is not the God of the Bible, but your the object of your faith is, well, I put oil on it. So that seals it and it must it, it must go happen. That ain't that's that is using an object where the object is the is is where you're putting your faith. And you're using it in order to elicit some sort of outcome that is witchcraft. And it goes on in these churches all the time. And no one calls it out because it's such a, it's the practice is so abused. All y'all doing is getting greasy and sometimes tapping into the occult. But this is not Christian, this is new age mysticism 
cloaked in Christian language. That's what this is. So let me go on. We're going to finish reviewing this article and then I'm going to get up on out of here. So then she goes, the course, which starts on October 6th, will accommodate 150 people and feature seven two-hour sessions of intense in, intensive teaching at an undisclosed location in Atlanta, Georgia. That's my hometown. You better hope and pray I don't find out where it is. Because I will get, I will round up me and, and, and three folks from my church so we can preach the gospel to the participants in there and pray that the Lord will remove the scales off their eyes and they can come out and run away from this foolishness. That's what we would do. You don't want them kind of problems, Juanita, but we care about the people. We care about the people you're leading astray. Your conscience is already seared. So, I don't, you know, we're going to give you the gospel because I, mean, I do that. We're going to do that at the end. And I pray that the Lord has mercy on your soul, but you will have to give an account for this. But this is more so about the people who are following you, the ones who don't know no better. A fool is made every minute. These are for the ones that don't know no better. So, um, you, you get a tote bag and a prayer shawl, your, your, the, the anointing oil, and then there's a Q and a with her, right? So this, in my first video, I think I mentioned that this may have been virtual. We now know that it's in person. So if you're not in the metro area, that means you got travel expenses. You actually got to get to Atlanta. You got to find a place to stay. We know her demographic is not the high end caliber of the prosperity movement. These are working class and working poor, typically most often black women who are living paycheck to paycheck, sometimes two, three, maybe more for children. And they're going to spend $1,500 just to enroll in the Institute, travel expenses, lodging. Are you feeding them? Because I didn't see here that you're getting lunch every day. I, I don't know. Uh. It's seven two-hour sessions. So is it all on one day? I don't know, nor do I care. But check this out. You know it's bad. When the chief false teacher himself says this is a problem. Who am I talking about? Good old Marcus Rogers. Marcus Rogers goes, hold on. Bynum's response last Thursday came a day after Chicago-based internet preacher, no such thing, and U.S. Army veteran Marcus Rogers talked about the course with his nearly 1 million followers on Facebook, calling the $14.99 price tag, which is a discount on its regular $19.99 price, outrageous. I never thought I'd see the day where I would say, Marcus, you write about something. You write about this. It is outrageous. But th th when, you, when a false teacher can, can see that another false teacher, that's bad. You know you've hit a new low. As you know, guys, I never charge to travel and preach, and I never charge for classes. I feel like God freely gave it, so I freely give it to his people. I know that there were a few pastors who don't like that. I do that because I teach everything they charge for free. I don't know what, what is so novel about what she's teaching. Hear me clearly. When I was a false convert, dead in my sand, I'm talking about as spiritually dead as they come. In 1998, I bought no more sheep. I didn't know no better. I did not know God. I did not know his word. I was living for myself, following the course of the pattern after this world, as Ephesians 2 talks about, right? I was, I was, I was, when I say I was drowning in sin, I was drowning in sin. And I was a regular church attendee. I was in church. I was dancing on the praise team. I was a member of Newburgh. Bishop Long was my pastor. Um, heavily involved. And Christendom, just as dead as they come, just as dead. I was a corpse spiritually, and I bought no more sheep. And I remember watching that VHS tape. That lets you know how old I am. I remember watching that VHS tape and snotting and crying and waving an old soggy sheep because who knows what happened. On Listen, y'all don't hear me, okay? I did all of that. The sheets wasn't the problem. I needed to be born again. I needed to repent of my sin, abandon it, leave it where it was. I, I needed to be made alive in Christ Jesus. That's what these women need. They don't need a course. Salvation is free. 
the clear, simple teaching and preaching of the gospel, Romans 1 16, that's the power of God unto salvation to everyone who believes. It wasn't until I heard the gospel and I abandoned all of this other extra stuff, all these other extra biblical things that you can't find in the pages of scripture. It wasn't until I abandoned that, that I actually, the Lord gave me a new heart, removed the scales from my eyes, gave me a love and thirst for his word. And I was able to compare who I was before Christ to who I was when he made me alive. And I was like, nah, that ain't the same person. That is not the same person. I can literally watch like in my mind, a movie reel of who I used to be. And I'm like, wow, that woman was a wreck. I was a wretch undone. That's the point I'm trying to make. Those, those women don't need an intensive. They need intense repentance. They need to hear the gospel. This is why the, I'm always talking about the gospel, the gospel, God. the gospel is not just, oh, good news. Jesus died and he rose. No, there, there are implications to what Jesus did on that cross. He died because we're sinners. We've offended him. He's holy. He's righteous. He's just, he's full of truth. What this is, is the opposite of that. That's why I'm on this live today. So then. Marcus Rogers' post, he goes, as you guys know, um, so I want to, he goes, I want to hear y'all's hearts on this. I just think this is outrageous. Now, mind you, he's starting his own little fake school too. And that's a whole nother conversation that I said, I won't go. Okay. We, we, I'm gonna keep it. I'm gonna keep it going. I'm gonna keep it going. The post attracted more than 3,700 comments and emoji reactions, both for and against Rogers' position. Comedian Wellington Juju, Juku, don't know who that is, don't ask, I'm just reading the article, joked in a Facebook video that when he first heard about Bynum's prayer course, he thought she was giving lessons on her, <laughs> her OnlyFans page. She might as well, because that's, that's her next step. If she continues to pimp her false gospel and her false teaching, and she doesn't get the results, she very well could be on her way to get in own. I've seen it. I've seen it happen. When people build a lifestyle that they can't support, right? And they can't keep the Ponzi scheme going and their conscience gets seared like this, they do all kinds of things to keep that lifestyle up. The hair, the clothes, the car, the house. Who We don't know what she might do next. Some critics compared Bynum's course to a prayer meeting, but Bynum in her address said the course is part of the launch of her prayer institute. Oh, so she she ta she taking this to another level. She's trying to turn this into a whole seminary or something. This is not some cheap base class where we're going to be in there swinging from chandeliers and giving you two tots about some scripture in the Bible. And we're going to call that a school of prayer. No, we're going to school and we're going to learn as much as I can deposit in you in 14 hours. And I'm going to do my very best. We don't want your deposit. We don't we don't want that file spirit of Jezebel and, and, and of Mammon and, 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 and no, we don't want, please, we don't, please keep your spirit, keep your impartation and don't want it. It is void of the spirit of God. I am good. But she says, oh no, this ain't some cheap class. We're not going to be swinging from the chandeliers and giving you two tots about some scripture in the Bible. She told on herself right there. I told y'all, scripture is not enough for these people. They don't believe in the sufficiency of scripture. Everything they do is extra biblical. It's outside the pages of scripture. Y'all thought I was playing. Y'all thought I was playing. I'm gonna address some of these comments. I ain't been ignoring y'all. It's just, <sighs> Juanita Bynum will stoop as low as call her goons and tell them to look you up. It's a witch hunt to harass people people do i do i look afraid i serve the sovereign god of the universe i am his daughter jesus is my brother i'm in the family of god and if the persecution comes so be it why would i think that persecution would not come when you speak the truth and you say what the bible says 
Those who are opposed to the truth in God's word are going to have issues with it. They will scoff you. They will mock you. They will persecute you for his name's sake. That's fine. I'm in good company. I'm good. Scripture ain't enough. Joel Miller said it. Yeah, she's back. She's back. Um, Chicken Grease said, these false teachers are deceiving and being deceived. They are wolves, period. This is true. This is true. Tim Costello, each of us has to discover an attribute of God, measure ourselves against that standard, repent, change, and obey. Amen. Yep. No, no more sheets was the junk. I used to watch every time I found myself deep in some sin, which was quite often in my mind, if I just watch Juanita holler and spit on that stage, uh, that I was going to get my breakthrough. But the, the truth was, I love my sin. I didn't want to really live for Jesus. I just wanted to have his name attached to me because. I grew up a Christian and I figured, you know, the, the, the moral teachings of Jesus and, you know, you, you, it was a religious activity for me. So abandoning my sin and fully submitting myself to the Lordship of Christ. Now nah, I wasn't ready to do that. Nah, not in 1998. No, sir. No, no, no. You can't. In my mind, I was like, well, if I actually submit to Christ, I can't have my sin. And I love my sin. And people always say, this is the reason why people don't go to church. Or this is the reason why people are leaving the church. No, that is not true. People leave the church and don't come to church. Granted, this does give the visible church a bad name, but they don't come because they love their sin. Because the moment you have to tell them that Jesus loves you, but he did not die for you to, to stay in your sin. You got to repent and leave that alone. And then they're trying to do that in their own strength is because they need to be born from above, just like the wind blows. You don't know, you know what's happening, right? It's the same with the new birth. People love their sin. They love darkness rather than the light. Why? Because their deeds are evil. This is why people don't want to go to church. Yes, but what, but what Bonita is doing is probably a turn off, right? So people who just have common sense, right? Not spiritual eyes to see, but just common sense. Just be like, nah, that sounds like a money grab to me. I don't, I don't think I want to go there. That's their reason. But that's also a false caricature of Christianity. That's not the God of the Bible that's being taught there. So, of course, they, you know, it may attract some folks. But it, it's not going to attract people who are like, I, I'm keenly aware that there's something wrong. I'm spiritually deficient and I need something. Tell me about this water, Sister April, that once I drink from this well, it'll never run dry. Like, tell me about the Jesus of the Bible. Tell me about him. Give me just the simple, plain gospel. Christ died for my sins. Right. Just but he didn't die so that I can stay in my sin. That's it's not how it works. Back to this article. And I'm gonna wrap it up. She goes, oh, wait a minute. Um, she's she's just she's gonna deposit in you for 14 hours, which nobody wants. This is not a revival, this is not a prayer meeting. She said this in response to those that have said that she is charging to pray. All of these years that you have seen me on social media, praying and laying hands and laying on the floor and doing the completionist course for 30 days straight and doing 5 a.m. prayer. I don't think anybody can remember me charging you to pray for you. That's ridiculous. Here come the charlatan moves. It's absolutely ridiculous, especially in the Last several years that I have traveled in ministry, giving away more money than I want to think about right now. Preaching at conferences and not taking a dime, which I recently did and have done and have stacks of letters to prove it. Listen, this is the audacity. The, these people really, one, they think you're stupid um, and they will use, this is usury, um, is spiritual elitism. And three, don't if you if you spoke and you didn't charge, 
don't throw that up in people's face because now they're calling into question and rightfully so that you're charging $1,500 for some course on prayer. There, There are no secret hidden gems in the pages of scripture that you can readily teach people for that fee. Nothing legitimizes this. Nothing. I'm sorry, sis. I'm sorry. Nothing you're going to teach, give away, or bestow, or impart is going to legitimize this $1,500 price tag. I would It would have made more sense, and I would have respected you as a business owner if you had said, I'm doing a, a, a four-week intensive on how to monetize your platform like I have, right? Keep Leave the prayer part out. Or how to build a thriving Christian business with integrity. Now, you may not know how to do that, but I can see someone paying for a course to do that, right? It's it's literally using biblical Christian principles to teach people how to be a faithful, God-honoring entrepreneur using their gifts, talents, and abilities and charging people for it. But you, what you're trying to do is convince us is what this is, but it's not. It's not. You know it's not, because you already said you ain't walking people through no one or two Bible scriptures. Do you see how she demeaned the authority of God's word? It's so low to her. It's 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 here, and she's here. This is why I said the sufficiency of scripture is not enough for these people. It ain't authoritative, because if it was, she would have been like, I can't, I can't put no product out like that. that. That's not biblical. They never compare their actions against the scripture to be like, do, do I, can I do this? Like, is this biblically legit? Can I do this? Would God be pleased? No, because it's very self-serving. It's very self-serving. But this is going to be an intensive class, she said. It's not a class for, oh, wait a minute, I skipped the part. Bynum said that in the course, she'll be teaching about prophetic dreams. How you teach somebody about a prophetic dreams? If it's a prophecy and it came from God, you can't teach that. None of the Old Testament prophets. I I can't see Isaiah saying that, you know. When when them hot coals, when when, 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 when the most hot hot coals and put them on my lips. I wrote down exactly how to read. I can replicate that. I'm going to teach you how to do that too. I don't see Isaiah, Jeremiah, Ezekiel, Micah. I don't see none of the Old Testament prophets intensely teaching their predecessors behind them on prophecies and and dreams and how to operate in the prophetic. She goes, because she's going to be teaching about prophetic dreams and how to operate in the prophetic understanding, how to hear from God and how to separate your emotions from what God is saying and how to be able to determine whether it's not that, whether or not that is something you're feeling your emotion or that it's really a word from God. I got to hand it to her. That's good right there. You know why I'm saying that's good right there? I'm saying that's good right there because these false converts who don't have a robust love for God's word, they're not in a strong Bible teaching church, they're not being discipled, they actually want to know the answers to that stuff. They actually want to know if, Am I being led by my heart and my feelings or was this God? Or was this God? I'm going to give it to you for free. How do you know? First of all, the Bible already tells us that our hearts are desperately deceitful. Our, our hearts are deceitful and desperately wicked. Who can know it? There's your answer right there. We don't trust our heart. We don't trust our feelings. We don't do that. No, no, no. One, are there already implicit or explicit commands in scripture? Like, are there already precepts laid out? I don't need to pay you. If I'm feeling I'm angry at somebody and I I, I want to go and I want to bust them in the mouth just because I'm mad. I don't need you to teach me to d- discern if that desire came in, or that, that thought came in my mind, whether it was godly and something that I should be doing or was that my flesh? But I'm handing it to her 
Because this paragraph right here, I wish I could put it on the screen right now, but it's going to be, matter of fact, let me, let me do it. Let me do it. This one right here. This one. I don't know if I can make it big. Y'all see that? Bynum said that in the course, she'll be teaching about prophetic dreams and how to operate in the prophetic understanding. Now, this I wholly different. You don't, you can't teach people prophetic dreams, and there's no such thing as operating in the prophetic, right? The gift of prophecy, meaning foretelling the future, right? I, I believe in forth telling, right? Right. But foretelling that that gift, it, we can argue on that charismatic gift being still in operation today, but there's no such thing as how to operate in the prophetic. Half of these people that are always walking around talking about the Lord told me and in my spirit, I just, the Lord just dropped in me. They're not hearing from God. They're not. They're just able to over spiritualize their vain imagination and convince you that they're hearing from God. You know why I know they never point to a book, chapter, and verse. They never admonish you or encourage you to say, let's study God's word to find out the principles that are already laid out. Like, you don't need somebody to teach you how to operate in the prophetic so that the next job offer you get, you can tap into some spiritual seance to be like, yep, mm, that one was from the Lord. No, there are already principles laid out in scripture on how to discern the will of God. First, your life got to line up. Like Thessalonians tells us what God's will is. First, it's your sexual purity, right? That is an explicit God's will for your life is X. You are not held responsible for what God has not already revealed in his word. What you are responsible for is what he's clearly revealed in his word, word for you to govern yourself and your life according to that. Everything else, we have wisdom and biblical precedent to be like, okay, I've got this job offer. God has opened this door. He's opened this door. Don't over-spiritualize that decision. Use your wisdom and say, Lord, I asked for this job and two doors opened for me. Thank you, Lord. Now, which one do I want? Because you gave me a double portion to choose from. I could choose from job A or B. Job A is paying this. Job B is paying that. Job A is closer to home. Job B is further away. Like you don't have to be so bogged down with the details that you fail to act because you're like, well, I'm I'm just waiting for the Lord to tell me yes or no. He he loved you so much that he gave you two choices. Pick the pick the one that you want, and the one that you choose at the end of the day, that's the one that the Lord willed for you. This ain't rocket science. You don't need to pay people for this, operating in prophetic foolishness. That's unbiblical. There's no such thing as how to operate in the prophetic. Every prophet that God chose to speak authoritatively on his behalf, one, they, they weren't prophesying good tidings. It was always judgments coming. Y'all need to repent. I really don't want to say this, but here you go. It wasn't good news. It wasn't glad tidings of great joy, right? We don't have these examples in, in scripture. What, whatever happened to just being a regular Christian? Like, I'm, I'm just regular. Like, I'm just here. I'm just, it's just me and my Bible. And, and I'm raising fe children in the fear and admonition of the Lord, you know, and, and the things he's already explicitly said in scripture. I, I, I'm just doing that. I, I'm just doing that. What happened to that? Why we always got to, uh, we got to outdo each other. Well, my prophetic gift, because my tongues flow smoother than yours. So I, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a super Christian. I'm, 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 I'm next level stuff. It's spiritual elitism. That's what this is. It's spiritual elitism. Whew. Sorry, y'all. I, I done skipped through so many comments. I ain't even, I'm going to say that was me. Over-spiritualized decision after decision, and it never worked out right. Right. Now I get it. No regular Christians, nor regular pastors. Everyone has superpower, <laughs> right? It's not a mystery. It's not something you need to wait for him to tell you. God ain't speaking audibly to you. No way. He's already spoken. And the times when God spoke audibly in scripture, it went, he went, we read the text of scripture and we think when we're reading it on this side of history, right? I just want to say this point. I just want to get this out. We're reading it this side of history. 
So we're reading it on a continuum. But the scriptures that are recorded for us, it spans over like 1,500 years. And if you actually charted all the times where God was speaking, it's real isolated. It wasn't like every day, his word from the Lord, his word from the Lord, his word from the Lord. And it's going all over the place. He's in, it was, what, what was recorded is what we needed to know. And it was the most important. And outside of that, wh- where is it all through history where God is just doing all this speaking? Because if we truly believe that, then that must mean that our canon is still open and everything Juanita says that she claims is from the Lord, we need to be appending to the pages of scripture. So that means we've got extra books because if if it's his word and it's authoritative and I have to govern myself by it, that makes it scripture. But we know that the canon is closed. We, we, We don't even know what to do with the 66 that he's already revealed to us. And yet, we're trying to over spiritualize something that a 63 year old woman is is conjuring up in her vain imagination because it's a money grab. So she goes, it's going to be very in, it's going to be a very intensive class. I'm almost finished, guys. Not a class for the faint hearted, not a class for people who just want to sit there and eat bubble gum and play with your phone. You're going to have to stay focused and pay attention because you're walking out there with the ability to take some of the tools that I'm giving you and teach them to your prayer meeting. So now she's making proselytes. She's duplicating her sinfulness and her her false signs and wonders and and, and prophecy and 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 propheticness. Now she's raising up little little baby Juanitas. They ain't going to bring this mess to their church and Lord forbid, if it's not a biblical church where the elders are guarding false teaching that comes in, then you're going to have to have the head of the women's ministry was like, you know, Sister Shirley, Sister Shirley came in and she was trying to teach us how to operate in the prophetic. And she started rolling on the floor and she slathered oil all on my face. And, you know, my skin already oily. Like, I just, I don't know what to make of this. This is what's happening. This is this is what's happening. Cast the spells on the people. It's sorcery. It's sorcery. Caitlin said, I learned a superpower. I learned how to keep my mouth shut. Amen. Amen. The best way to learn how to pray is to study the prayers in the scripture. That's what I tell people. I mean, if the apostles got our father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. Like, if that's what they got, it's good enough for me. It's a model. It's a pattern. How about something as simple as, Lord, reveal my heart to me, show me my sin, and make me more like you. In Jesus' name, amen. What a thought. That prayer took less than 20 seconds, and it was probably the most God-honoring thing because, I mean, I I didn't give thanks. Lord, thank you for this day. Thank you for allowing me to see the light of day because I don't deserve your grace. I didn't deserve your mercy, but you saw fit to, to, to let me live. Show me my sin. Open up the eyes of my understanding when I read your word. Help me to be more like you. Sanctify me and teach me how to love my enemies. When they out here doing all manner of evil against me, teach me how to love them. Give me a heart of compassion to pray for them. And keep me humble. In Jesus' name, amen. That's another good biblical prayer. Y'all getting all this content for free. Why? Because it don't take all that. She, she, she need to find another hustle. Because this, this one right here is not it. This, this one's not it. Um, yes, she wants, she's, she, yeah. Teach them to your prayer group. Teach them to your church. She said that in the last 14 years, she has also led her, God has also led her into a study of the brain and shown how prayer can be used to bring order to the brain. So now we have some new extra biblical knowledge, some Gnosticism, right? We have some new Gnosticism. So where God's revealed to her about how the human brain works and how we can use prayer. I mean, I mean, if you want to consider manipulation and mind control, studying the brain, maybe, because I you're good at that, sis. But no, Mm-mm. what the Lord began to teach me, ain't this article long? 
Whew, I'm almost done. What the Lord began to teach me is how to bring order to the brain so that when you get in prayer, you know what part of the brain is either being attacked or either being intercepted as the reason why you can't get a breakthrough in prayer because the mind, yeah, I'm sorry. We, we got to shut, we, I, this got to get shut all the way down. Um, No. One, the Lord didn't teach you this. You made this up. Two, if your brain is being attacked, do you leave room for the possibility that your life is not submitted to the Lord Jesus? Do you leave room for the possibility that you, you might just be distracted? Is there anxiety in your life, which is a direct command where God says, cast your cares on me. Don't be anxious for nothing. Be anxious for nothing, but through prayer, right? And supplications, make your request known to God. So she's implying that you're not getting a prayer through and you she got to crack the code because y'all scripture ain't sufficient. She got to crack the code for you. This is levels about how the brain functions in prayer. Well, if that's true, Juanita, how come the apostle Paul, he didn't leave this with us for our learning? Like he didn't record it. Did he forget? He, he just was like, you know what? Uh, before they put me in prison, I knew it was something I meant to write down. And I forgot. So I'm going to have uh, Dr. Bynum let y'all know. No, that ain't happening either. She goes, what part of the brain reacts to prayer? What can you do to avoid these those interruptions and these things that I walk through? And these are things that I practice on my own walk with God. So when I get in times of prayer, I don't even doubt whether it's going to be heard or whether or not it's going to be successful or whether or not I'm going to get the results that I'm praying about. The televangelist continues. And then even understanding mentally that if it's not the results that I'm praying about, then I also know what else is happening as a result of that, which you'll just have to come to the class to find out. Girl, shit, girl, shit. Oh, Lord. It's just word salad. Uh, yeah. All right, I'm done. Y'all can finish reading the rest of the article. The rest of the article talks about, you know, the 1997 No More Sheets sermon from the woman thou art loose, how she battled, you know, with her sexuality, her long for her husband, you know. She described the bed sheets as they was empty and why she ain't married and, and all this other stuff. And then it wraps it up with how she married Bishop Weeks, but then that relationship went south. Then she got beat up and then she went on the Frank and Wanda morning show. That's the end of the article. So, yeah. All right. Um, guys, listen. Do not be deceived. When your head is not down in the scriptures and you're not in a good church, you will think when the next the next Juanita Bynum comes along. Because she do. There's some baby Juanita Bynums being raised up. I see him all over YouTube. God is speaking to him every day. He's downloading messages for you from them every single day. And these people have hundreds and thousands of subscribers. And do you want to know why? It's because they are well skilled in the art of tickling your ears and telling you what you want to hear. If they can just keep dangling the carrot in front of you, your husband is coming. That job and all those people that did you wrong, you know, you're going to get the victory. Your blessing around the corner. It's on the way. Make your haters your motivators. Like they know, they know all of the catchy catch phrases that will excite your emotions, get you all riled up. And you still a false convert because you keep looking to them and we can't get you to spend any time in your Bible. And when it is time spent in your Bible, it's you're going to read one verse. Jesus wept. Amen. OK, so where was then, then you're on Tinder? Swipe left, swipe wife, like looking for a man versus am I even a Christian? Why is it that I feel so empty inside? Why why do I feel spiritually dead? Why is it that I don't really want to listen to a good biblical sermon? What is going on with me spiritually that I don't love God's word like I should, right? What is going on with me spiritually that I'm only attracted to the Juanita Bynum types? There's a spiritual deficiency. There's a spiritual famine in the land. And I'm burdened for my sisters, right? The ones who look like me because we're the ones that are easily beguiled because many of us don't have any male headship to guard us against this, 
I know situations where women are in unequally yoked marriages. Like they're married to some, a guy, he don't go to church. He doesn't claim the name of Christ. And even he can see that there's something wrong with this. And even he'll just be like, why are you spending all your time giving all your money to that church? And half the stuff they saying, like, I ain't never seen that in the Bible. Do you leave room for the possibility that even your unconverted her husband has sense enough to know that it's fraudulent? The stuff that you're listening to and these churches that you're going to are fraudulent. Do we leave room for the possibility of that? So here's what I don't want this live stream to end up being, right? I, I don't want people to be like, well, she sure tore her a new one. And then we all just go in peace and serve the Lord. No. What I would like to do is we're going to pray. We're going to pray for the loss right now. We're going to, I'm going to, I'm going to share the gospel. We're going to pray for the loss. We're going to pray for those who are captivated by this because they're still dead in their sin and they need to be made alive in Christ Jesus. We're going to pray that God raises up other women who can teach women the Bible in context and, and raise up other women who can teach other women to have a robust love for theology and doctrine. Because those things, Juanita, is what governs our life. Those are the things that help us to know, should we be doing this or should we be doing that? Should we be going here? Should we be going there? Should I be talking to this guy or should I be talking to this guy? It's doctrine and theology, having a robust love and thirst after God's word that helps us in these things. So we're not just going to leave. At, we've talked about it. It's atrocious. She has some nerve. It is, it is the most self-centered, man-centered, narcissistic thing to think that when someone, whether it's those inside the church or outside of the church, give you legitimate critique to make you rethink what you're doing and you double down in your foolishness because you're so prideful. And in your sinful wickedness, you're trying to peddle this off as a good thing. So we're going to pray. We're going to pray for the women who are captivated by this foolishness. And I pray that they're not men parting with their $1,500. Men tend to be a little bit more logical, like, nah, I mean, I like Dr. Barnum and all, but nah, I'm, not, I'm not paying $1,500 for that. Like, if there are men, I'm joking, but I am dead serious. I am going to pray that we, we just gonna do it but I, I just want to let y'all know and, and then i'm going to i'm going to end the live stream but this is a serious matter and i know i joke and i have my little funny quirky way of, of conveying biblical truth um and, and that's 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 just how i am and i do believe i do believe the lord uses it for his glory but this is very serious this is not even funny anymore it, it's not funny because those of us who love God's word and love God's people, and we recognize that the harvest is so ripe. I don't want to be caught slipping on the job by not making sure that I make it plain the gospel of Christ and that it's preached without distinction, freely and liberally. But we're going to pray. So if you guys need to go, you can go. But we're, we're going we're gonna to pray for uh Juanita Bynum. We're gonna pray for her followers. Um we're we're just we're just gonna pray. I just feel led to do that because this is so concerning um to me. I I was deceived for a long time and I was caught up in false teaching for a long time. So I'm kind of have a burden for that because I, I know what it's like to be on that side and I, and I know the freedom that awaits me when I abandoned that false doctrine and that false gospel and embraced the true doctrine of Christ. So Father, in Jesus name, Lord, we come before you thanking you. We are so thankful for your grace, the grace that we don't deserve. We're thankful for your mercy. You've been so merciful to us that even when we have sinned, you have not snuffed us out, but you allow us to breathe your air and to enjoy your creation. So we thank you for that. I thank you for everyone who is on this live stream right now that has come to hear what I had to say on this topic. But I also pray for those that are listening who might have some pushback, who don't like my words and didn't like the sharp criticism that I had for Dr. Bynum. Lord, we have precedent in your word that we are to mark those who are causing divisions and are teaching things that are opposed to the doctrine that you handed down to the apostles. 
We are to expose them. We are to mark them. But Lord, it's, 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 it's not enough for us to do just that. We need to show people why this is wrong, how your word does not give us any biblical precedent for anything such as this, and then to show people this is what God's word teaches. So right now, I want to, firstly, I want to pray for Dr. Bynum. I want to pray for her in the sense that, Lord, based on her public ministry, we have reason to believe that she is wielding power that's not from you. It is somewhere else. And we know that it's only two places it can come from. And if it's not from you, it must be from Satan. But Lord, your power is not so far off that it can't reach the most vilest of sinners because that power reached me when I was dead in my sin and trespasses. So that same power that raised Jesus from the dead, that regenerates the lost, is the same power that can find her wherever she is right now. Whether she stumbles upon this video or not, she doesn't need it, Lord, because you can convict her heart. You can draw her to yourself and have her fall on her knees and repent saying, what must I do to be saved? We pray for her right now, Lord, that she would repent of this wickedness. The millstone she is tying around the necks of the undiscerning and the babes in Christ and the unconverted and the false convert, the ear tickling that she is doing. God, you are the one who said in this word, you are the one that repair, you, you prepare the soil, right? You prepare the soil, Lord God. So I am praying for those soils to, that you are preparing that the, the seeds would be sown. And that the one where the soil, where the word gets choked out, God, you're sovereign over that too. But for the ones who are going to be called by your name, the ones that you are going to gather unto yourself, I pray for them. That whether it's by a street preacher, a visit in the grocery store, somebody on their job gives them the gospel and tells them what they must do to be saved and that you would lead them to biblically sound churches. Lord, raise up biblically sound male pastors that are not afraid to preach the gospel and to just keep it simple, to not overcomplicate and muddy the waters with all this false doctrine. I pray for them too. And I pray that you would just lead these people to those churches and that you would empower just us regular lay people to have more of a desire and a thirst to preach the gospel and to open up gospel conversations with total strangers that we would just tell them, let me tell you about a man who showed me my sin, but who delivered me from my sin, who allows me to stand clothed in his righteousness, despite the fact that I'm guilty. Lord, I pray for them as well. And I pray for the listening audience those who are subscribed and those are who not. Keep me humble, Lord Jesus, that I will continue to stand for what is right, despite and regardless of the pushback, the persecution, the criticism, the mean comments. Help me to be found faithful and echoing what is just in your word and in your word alone. Lord, we love you and we praise you and we thank you for the souls that you will be saving and that are being saved. We thank you for your elect, Lord God, in Jesus' name, amen. All right, you guys, um, it's time to go. Uh, that was an hour. I wasn't trying to be that long, but the audacity of those who want to profane and use the Lord's name for selfish gain you will have to give an account. That's that's really what I want to say. Um, did you guys have any questions before I head on out? Um, Brother Marshall is such um, a, 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 a wonderful encouragement to me. He's always sending me content for me to cover because I believe he has the same righteous indignation on a lot of the foolishness and foolery that we see in the visible church as we know it, particularly in American evangelicalism. He goes, Brian Carr and Todd Hall, Clarence McClendon, all of them are hacks and con men. He's right. When you hear people in my comment section say stuff like this, and it, and it causes something on the inside of you to either get offended or upset, because you're like, well, what's wrong with Brian Carr? And I thought he was a man of God. Or Clarence McClendon, I thought he was okay. 
there's a reason why they're saying this. They're, we're, they're, they're not, we're not saying it to be mean. We're saying it because these people have a public ministry of doing things like this, pushing the gospel of prosperity, not being faithful to what the apostles taught. And therefore they build these ministries and they have the numbers and they've got the subscribers and they have everything that their carnal heart wants. But the people that are following them, they're being deceived and they're being led astray. This is why we name names. I'm not afraid to name names um, because if you don't name names, how do you how do you warn people who to stay away from if you don't name the name, right? Um, Reva says, I don't know who's the worst, Juanita or the people who are paying for the foolishness. They're they're both gonna. I think they're. I think the people, right? Because if she wouldn't do this if there wasn't a market for it, right? Um, like I said, in my first video on this topic, the one that I pre-recorded, I uploaded it today. Please, by the way, go check out the video, like that video, share that video, leave me a comment. Let me know your thoughts. Um, they're both complicit. The people who actually parted with their money, they are like Simon the Sorcerer. And in the same vein, she is also like Simon the Sorcerer. Um, go read Acts 8 of the story of uh, Philip and, and, and when he was preaching in Samaria, and then when John, Pete, and when, when uh, Peter and John came, and they're like, well, wait a minute, because, you know, they're laying on hands. Like, go read that. That'll give you uh, some insight. Daryl goes, if Juanita Bynum was giving away Krispy Kreme donuts, I would not attend. Yeah, I don't, I don't even like Krispy Kreme that much, but yeah, I'm at the point where I really can't stand Pentecostalism and charismatic. So, you know what, Marshall? I, when I first came to Christ, um, legitimately, not when I was a false convert, remember y'all, my, my testimony is I grew up in the church, right? So there's a continuum of my life where before Christ, when I was just a churchian, right? A Christian in name only. And then when I was actually converted and became a born again believer, th that's like BC, AD, right? That's how I divide my life. And um, when I first uh, heard the gospel, repented of my sin, recognized that I was a false convert, this is what happened to me. I got to a point where I really, I was so, well, one, it wasn't difficult for me to abandon a lot of that false teaching that I had been indoctrinated with, but it did make me angry. There was like a righteous anger where I was like, I can't. And so for a long time, I couldn't even watch a praise break on Facebook. I know y'all like, that's so innocent. Those people are so funny. Just go on and watch them. I couldn't even watch, I couldn't watch a praise break. I couldn't. If I had walked somewhere and TBN was on and I saw it was a trigger for me because I was like, these people lied to me and deceived me for so long. May God have mercy on their soul. But it did. That anger turned into humble gratitude because I said, the Lord did not have to open my eyes. He did not have to grant me the gift of faith. He did not have to lead me on his sovereign path where I got connected with people and mentors and a good church to help me detox from that, I became, I went from righteous anger, well, no, it probably was an unrighteous, sinful anger to a righteous anger to a, a humble gratitude. And then it came to that, that feeling metamorphosized into, well, I can't be silent. I have to tell somebody because there's people out there like me that were deceived and they need to know, like, that's what happened with me. So I get it. I get it. Um, the, the only thing that I would admonish, guard your heart, guard your heart, guard your eyes and your ear gate, because I went through a period where I was like, I can't, I can't even watch even in a joking manner, these people, because it would make me upset. It would trigger me to think that I was like, I used to do, I was running up around tearing up these people carpet and I, Trust me, I've been there. I get it. Um, let's see, what else did I miss? No regular Christian or, re yeah, oh, I read that already. So I think we're good. We're good to go. Um, thank you to the 56 people who have joined me on this live stream. Please make sure that you like this video, right? Share it on your social media platforms. 
And after I end the live screen, screen, if you have questions for me that I have failed to address here, um, articulate those in the comment section. I'd love to engage with you. Um, you know, I don't mind pushback, right? I don't mind being able to being put in a position where I even have to give a biblical defense for why I say the things that I say. Um, I said it publicly. So, um, you know, now that doesn't mean I'm gonna go back and forth with you all day with a whole paragraph. Like I, I'm probably not gonna do that. I might just make a video addressing the comment. But if you're coming in good faith and you do have concerns about some of the things I said, it is all good. Pushback, disagreement is welcomed here. Disrespect, being rude, and just being extra for the sake because you just need attention. I'm not gonna tolerate that. I will block you. So um, yes, Clarissa, catch the replay. I pray that you do. And um, I love you guys. Please pray for the loss. Um, pray that the Lord would invigorate inside of you a passion for the loss and give the gospel. And with that, uh, thank you. Thanks, Chicago. Yeah, it's it's by God's grace that I got here. It, it wasn't like this. It didn't happen uh, overnight. Um, it did not happen overnight. But I love you guys with the love of the Lord. Uh, stay rooted and grounded in truth, which is God's word. And uh, plug into a local church. And I'm trying to think of anything else I want to tell you guys. I think that's it. That's it. That's all I really wanted to say. Grace and peace to you guys. Thank you.